And on that note, we will start recording. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let me present. How's it going, Yash? Oh, so I just wanted to, let's see, so, Yash, did you have anything you wanted to talk about? Because I know we, we, uh, we lost you last meeting. I think we were going long. Yeah, actually, I had a, I had another meeting after that. So okay, yeah. Actually, did you want to, was there anything you wanted to talk about? No, I, I didn't make any progress on the Windows stuff. Okay. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask you some things about that, like, are, are, are you going to work on that extension or should I just make those windows tests? Um, oh yeah, the, uh, the HTTP test. Okay. So, um, I mean, let's see, realistically, I don't have any time anytime soon. Um, I would like to, but I have a lot of, a lot of things on my plate right now. Um, so let's see. Um, let me, let me, let me sort of, I need to sort of get or I have a bunch of projects that I'm working on. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit swamped right now. Um, I think, yeah, it's probably the, the thing is, it's probably the same error. So it's just like, can I, I um, I'll try to, if that, is that the only thing that's left? Uh, actually, uh, I was asking about the documentation plugin you asked me to do. About oh, yeah. The Sphinx one. Oh, I thought you were talking about HTTP test. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh -oh. Okay. So, all right. Well, we'll, so I'm, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do the thing I was doing where I make the agenda here and then we talk about it. So we'll get everybody's points first for what we want to talk about this week and then we'll talk about that one first. Um, so and let me just make the note on shared config. Not really needed. And this is Gitter. Not really needed for Gitter, right? Again. Hello. Yes. Yeah. So the it's the Gitter bot has the API token. That means it doesn't need the shared config. Or is it no, some? No. But okay. if we have, we can remember the previous message. Um. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So not really needed for Gitter bot. So we like states. Of... Message. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. And then documentation plugin. Okay. Um, so. Let me just do this here. Um, and that's, let's see, so Yash, um, so that's done, um, talked about, uh, not needed. Okay, um, so Yash is there, so documentation plugin you want to talk about, and then HTTP test still needs fixing, I just made, I just wanted to make a note of that, um, actually this should go down here, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Yeah, so uh, I only fix the main tests for DFSML and other plugins yeah. still need fixing. Like a lot of tests would fail. Okay. So can you just, like, it would be really helpful if we just set up a CI for Windows too. Yes, okay, so let's see. Uh, need CI for Windows and uh, yes, only yes, fixed main package will need to fix all the plugins as well. Okay. Um, 
So let's see, need CI for Windows. Okay, great. So then let's go back. So Agen, um, what else did you want to talk about today? Yeah, uh, so I'm using the CLI commands to train and predict the model, but I can't redirect out. OK. Um, and OK. In what context is this? Train and predict what model? For model, like once you get the text. OK. All right. Uh, is that it? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, Saksham. Uh, yeah. Just the pull request. Uh, you have to review it the final time. It's ready, and I am. I'll continue working on uh, new operations. Oh yeah, I think and I saw that last night. Yeah. Also had a doubt with how we can use two operations. Uh, one operation at two places in the same data flow. Uh, in CLI. Oh, wait. So, oh, you mean, oh, okay, so this is the instances. Um, so, yeah, okay, we'll talk about that. Where the hell did that go? Um, okay. So. Okay. Okay. Is that that accurately capture what you want to talk about? Uh yes. Okay. So and I will review this. I was looking at it last night, but then I was dozing off. I was so tired. Um let's see, so yeah, all the tests are passing, just that the transformer test went on for six hours and then just stopped. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Um, and then that brings me to uh, another point that we have. So, uh, transformers is broken. So the transformers got broken um, with the 3.0.0 release. Um, um, and so let's just check this out. I should put this at the end. Um, because they did a release yesterday, and so the transformer is now breaking. I'm just going to put the version range on it as a temporary fix. Um, John will put, I was in the middle of doing that, version range on as a temporary fix. Um, and then this is the issue for reference if somebody wants to take a look at it. Okay, it's not critical that we get this fixed right away. It's just, uh, you know, I'll put the version range on, and whenever we can, that, that would be good. Um, so, uh, da, da, da. okay. Um, I can't remember why I was reminded of that. Oh, because you said the test timed out. Okay. Um, all right, um, and then the other thing you said, Saksham, was that you want to figure out how do we use an operation multiple times within a data flow, right? So the same operation, but we want multiple usages of it, right? Like maybe a different config or something. Is that the idea or? Like, like if, we, uh, like the la last time uh, we uh, were having three features, right? Yeah. So if, if we have a different set of features and we need to like uh, use uh, another operation, like flatten again for two of them. Mm -hmm. 
so I was not able to uh, redirect the output. Oh, how do you do features. flatten on two different features? Yeah. Okay. The yeah. Same, uh, operation. Yeah. So you basically okay. So use same operation. All right. Okay. Um, is that that's it for you today? Yeah, I'll con uh, I'll just continue on adding new operations. Uh, All right. After this PR is done. Okay. We'll continue adding new operations after this PR is done. All right. And then Himanshu? Yeah, so today I have to talk about NLB operations, how we have to begin working on that. Okay. And the, and the second is uh, I will take up this Transformers issue and fix this. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, well. Yeah. Thank you. All right, and then they keep breaking a lot of things in every release. Yeah, they keep changing their API. Um, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. But the funny thing is, pip usually won't upgrade. Um, pip usually doesn't upgrade if you have like a major number change. I thought. Um, so it's weird that it it upgraded from our two dot something to three. Um, but I don't know. Um. Okay, we'll fix transformers. No issue. Um, NLP operation. Oh yeah, so uh, just just sort of how how are we getting started with operations? Or yeah, no, so we have to talk about that approach. Okay. Basically. So. Yes, I am. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Anybody see anything here that we didn't get? All right. So. All right. Um. Okay. Um. Let's talk about let's talk about the documentation plugin. We'll go from top to bottom. Let's talk about the documentation plugin first. Um, so uh, essentially, did we make an issue for that? Um, uh, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, sh should we start working on the plugin, or uh, we should like? It was confusing last time. I didn't. Oh, uh, yeah. Properly. So last time uh, we finalized on what? Like we are working on the plugin right now. Or yeah. I just fix the Windows test and give the commands for Windows separately in the documentation using that tab feature. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say before we do that, though, we should figure out this plugin um, because you know the Windows stuff is um, yeah the the well, and and wasn't there also the issue of the pipes, right? Um, so yeah, so there's the issue of the pipes, and so I think the first step here is let me make up a, a project board, um, and we'll figure out we'll do Windows. Um, okay. Um, Okay. Mm. 
All right. Yeah. I don't need this every single time I make a project. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so the things we need to do are, right, ah, all right, so, okay, let's just, Maybe event give the option to use. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Uh, okay, who knows what we meant to say there. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right, okay. Let's just make some of these. So, why it did it not get the whole thing? <sighs> Okay, I keep all tabbing. It's not all tab. Okay. Okay. And then, so for the instructions, we need to use this and then make the script. So. And we're going to create extension. Okay, so there's basically three or four main things here. So We don't need this. Okay, and then we also need to note that um, plugins, so each plugin needs to be made to support Windows. Um, the main package has been updated. Um, and then HTTP test depend dependency needs to be updated to support Windows. Um, and then what else was there? There was, oh, we need to enable uh, Windows in CI. Okay, was there anything else that I missed there? Okay. Uh, can you tell me, like, how does dev service install work in okay. the second DSFML? So... so because I'm getting a lot of errors when I'm installed. I had to comment out a couple of uh, plugins. To okay. That yes. So, let's see. Um, all right. So, basically, what it does is... Okay, let's just get rid of this for a second. Um, where is the small service to... Okay. Um, so uh, it basically just goes through, and so you can see we've got this plugins. Um, so we've got you know DFML plugins, and then we've got DFML service dev. Um, and in plugins, we just list out all of the you know all of the plugins that we have. 
Right. Um, and then uh, so that we have this complete list that we can go do the install from. And, and here, all we do is basically build this giant pip install command. Um, and let's see. Yeah, we built this giant pip install command. And let's see if I can get it all sort of. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right, this, we build this giant command, right? So it looks at all these, it takes these, turns them into paths, and then it builds this giant pip install command, right? So prefix and then dash E in front of every single one of them so that they all stall, install in development mode. So it's just like going through and running, you know, pip install prefix or not prefix if you didn't use dash user um, and then model TensorFlow or something like that. And it just does all of them, right? So model scikit. Um, and so let's see. Uh, but what was the question really here? He said you're Should getting a bunch of, of errors. Yeah. So why are all of them in code plugins? Like uh, if one of them fails in some case, like all of them fail. Yeah. And yeah. All of them fail. A couple of people uh, asked me while setting up DFFML, and they mentioned the same thing that one of these plugins, if that fails, they they have no clues like how to set up DFFML. Then uh, okay, so maybe so maybe we I, need it to just go I told through them the same thing to just comment out the plugin that is causing the trouble. And... Uh huh. Okay, so let's maybe do it so that if it. Uh... Maybe we should change this so that it tries to install each one, and then it tells you which ones failed, um, if it failed, right? And but the rest of them still get installed. Does that sound like a better idea? Uh, or yeah. what? But yeah, okay. So let's just do that. So let's make an issue for that. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. So let's see. Um, okay. Uh, so. Uh, service dev install uh, command is confusing when there are errors. Yeah, I, I'm seeing. I, I see why this would happen. Is because especially some of these now have some more complex complex dependencies, um, and so if we don't have the requisite libraries installed, um, it's going to blow up. So um, it's confusing when there are errors. Um, so we should try to install each package individually, um, then at the end and report which packages did not successfully install. Okay. Um, Okay, so we'll That's make an issue. All right, and then I think another thing that would be helpful on this one is um, so another thing that I think might be helpful on this one is the is just a is having that we have that depths.sh script that we're using in the CI to install all the dependencies. Um, and maybe we should we should probably um, we should probably make it so that someone could run that script on their machine, right? And then end up with their you know a a a, a fully set up machine with all the dependencies they might need, right? Um, so that that because you know things like auto S, auto sk learn, um, Bobo Rabbit, um, uh, there's a bunch of them that we apt get install stuff. So we should probably also make that something that we can do so on a windows machine vocal rabbit is the one okay yeah it's that difficult. makes sense yeah because it requires some uh something i think boost right okay so uh, service dev install okay uh 
try installing each package individually report All right, yeah let's just leave it at this so enhancement um, dev tools uh, it's high priority it's definitely very short okay and let's try to get this in before the next release then because that will be well I guess if people are working on it it doesn't really matter when it happens um, so let's see yeah, we'll just no we don't want it on that let's see it doesn't really matter if it's in the next release or not because people will be running this or on master okay okay um, and then what else are we saying here so oh yeah um, it's it would also be nice if a user developer could run the .ci .sh or similar script to get their machine set up with all non-pip pip dependencies. Okay. Do you guys also do you guys also see the value in this one or do you think maybe there's a better idea to do this one? I mean we could make this one like no, can we make this one its own command? We could make this one something under service dev. I don't know. Mm, I don't know if we want to do that or just a script. What do you guys think? Does it make sense to make this a full command under service dev like you know, service dev install or like, you know, service dev non-Python depths or something? Um, or does it make sense to leave it as the little script and just tweak it? I think it's better to leave it as a script. So yeah, leave, leave it as a script. script. Okay, let's leave it as a script. All right, great. Um, yeah, great. otherwise it will get complicated. Yeah. All right, yeah, let's, let's, let's do one thing before we do everything. All right, so... Uh, make it so that developers can run this to get their non Python tips set up. Okay. Yeah, I think this one was almost done. I think I had a patch for this. Uh, let's see. All right, great. Good, good, good catch, Yash. Um, okay, so, and then the documentation plugin. So we've discussed this. Um, basically, I will reference the project board here for Windows because we're going to kind of lump this all under Windows support. Um, and then convert to issue. Oops, go oh, now I'm going to have these dumb formatted issues. God damn it, okay. 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 Uh, I'll do the rest of this later. Um, all right, uh, but I'll link the project board. That's what I was doing. Okay. Uh, is that pretty much what we needed to cover on that? Yeah, sure. Is there anything else you wanted yeah, to talk yeah, about there? Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let's say, how do we get started? Let me just see, because that one might take a little bit. So uh, how do we use the same operation, two different features in data flow? Okay, let's, let's hit this one first. This one should be the fastest. Um, so... Did I get all right? So you want to show us what you're doing, Agen, or give me a command I can paste in?
Yeah, I'll share my screen. All so right, great. Forward. No worries. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yep. So, uh, yeah, is it still in split screen? I hope. Yeah, it is. It is in split screen. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, now it's running the command uh, in CLI, but uh, this is the output, and the output is uh, it's not getting redirected. So this is the output. Yeah, this is the code. All right, you're actually making it. All right, can you push this code up real quick? Yeah, I'll do that. All right, great. Um, and then let's see. So. Okay, so let me just think here. All right, so you're making. Let's try to. All right, so. All right, so while we're doing that, let's start talking about how to get started writing NLP operations. So, what are we. Um, what are we current? So, what are you? What's your current thought process here, and what you're what you're trying to do, um, and what these operations will try to do? Let's just recap. Um, yeah. So let, let's say we have a sentence. Uh, I record this. A sentence. And we want to remove. Agen, can stop you on. here? Sorry, can yes. Agen, can you mute for a second? Because. Oh, sorry. Sorry. All right. Okay. Let's go. Oh, yeah. So uh, let's say we have a sentence and we want to remove the stop words, uh, basically like is, am, are, a, and all these kind of words. So we have an operation for that. Uh, we'll make one operation for that, and the sentence will be cleaned uh, by this operation. Then we have another operation that will map all the words to embeddings. That, that is numbers, basically, an array mm -hmm. of numbers. So that is a second operation. And once we have, basically, we converted a sentence to an array of numbers, floating numbers, and that array we can feed into the TensorFlow classifier and we can use for prediction. This mm -hmm. is just a simple example of how okay. we can go about it. Okay. So we can have in between different operations for this. All right, so these are these are just examples of operations. Okay, so map words to array of numbers, embedding, and then what does it do? Does it train or does it predict? Um, I mean, I guess probably this is a prediction, yeah. right? Or... I don't know. No, we can use it to train a TensorFlow classifier, and then okay. we can later use for prediction. Too. Oh, okay. I see. I see. So, and then we use this to train a TensorFlow classifier. Okay. All right. Okay. I see. I think I see it path forward here. So let's see. I can just let us know when you've pushed up that code. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll paste the link now. Okay. Um. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. So in these cases here, um, 
So let's take, for example, the first one, right? So is this something where you're going to use one of those? Do, do you have, did, I can't remember, Don't do. You, is there some code in one of those models that you, all right, great. Is there some code in one of the models we have already um, that does clean up of, of words like this? Or is this something new you're going to write? Oh, John, uh, Sudanshu yeah. can't join. Oh, thank you. God, I have my, my phone, I have to. Yeah, yeah this is all right. How's it going, Sutanshu? Yeah. Okay. So Himanshu. Um, so what were you saying? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll be using the spaces. So uh, we we'll, we just need a single command to do to do this. Okay. Just a single command, and, and it will clean everything. Okay. So you're basically just going to write a Python function that gets, you know, looks for this array of yeah. words that it wants to remove. Okay, so uh, essentially a Python function that looks through an array of words and removes them if found. All right. Um, okay. Right. Um, and then this, let's see. Okay. So this one. And then, and then we uh, will have just basically a dictionary and uh, it's, it, it is already available. So we'll have a dictionary where words will be mapped to an array, an array of numbers. And then we can look up uh, using spacey and uh, replace these words with the array. Okay. And then that will be used for training. This dictionary is already available, so we don't need to create this. Okay. So this. Need to look up. Okay. Yeah, we just need to look up. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds to me like um, okay. It sounds to me like with this first case, this is pretty simple. I mean, this is basically just the function that does this, and then you put at op on it, right? Um, so writing that operation is is not is is trivial. Um, this one. This looks like something where we're going to have a config, um, and the config object for the operation is going to, um, you know, going to contain that dictionary um, that has that embedding mapping, um, and then, um, and so and so yeah, so you're going to have a config, and the config will load, um, you know, whatever the whatever it's a file or uh, is it some kind of file that has all this information. Yeah, it, uh, it can be a file also. Yeah, basically okay. it's a file most of the time. Yeah. Basically, it's what? It's just a. Yeah, it's a file. Okay. Um. Okay. So. So and then I assume that file changes based on if you're training the different kind of model or is this something that's specific yeah. to certain data sets or is this just like some uh, yeah. somebody's created some master file that everyone uses. Uh, yeah, we can update it also, but most of the time we will just use it. Okay. So we can update and train and save it again as our own custom numbers. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And then so basically the the flow here is that we have a you know we have a you know a bunch of sentences and are these are we is this like so we're we're looking at a at a classifier right and so this is something like the sentiment analysis classification yeah. right. Okay, so essentially you're going to have the first operation to remove the stop words, and then you're going to have the operation to do the embedding, and then you train the model, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me just do... I mean, this is the first uh, use case I'm, uh, yeah. I will try to make, and then we can add on more operations. Okay, great. So uh, data flow is... Uh, to have operation one clean 
type sentence, uh, then operation two does encoding, then we feed to the uh, model for training or prediction. So this seems like a pretty, um, a pretty, um, pretty direct mapping onto the stuff that we did with MNIST um, to me, where we have the data flow preprocessing source. Um, yeah. So have you looked at that yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm looking cool. Yeah. So, uh, is there? Does it seems like there's any issues with that at this point, or? Uh, uh, not not anything that I found yet, but uh, once I start working on this, maybe I'll get something. Okay. Um, also, uh, this encoding is like label encoding, or is this something else? Uh, no, it's not label encoding. So uh, basically, it's like uh, you'll have a word, and then you can have a vector that is 300 dimensional. So it is something learned. So uh, if you have heard about word to vec or SIBO models. A word to vec is a pretty standard if you heard about that. So basically, the, it will convert a word to a vector. So it's word to vec. It's named. OK, so uh, John, I think we need that for images too, right? So because we have feature names as Calci, his dot outputs dot result. So we, we need that for images too. We discussed last uh, Friday. Um, I don't, I don't follow. Like the feature names are in, we, when we do get single spec, mm -hmm. uh, when we, in the seed, we do get single spec is equal to the three feature yeah. names that are dot outputs dot result. Yeah. So, uh, when I train the model, I need to give the features as, uh, Calcius dot outputs dot result, uh, yeah. colon int colon size. Yeah, yeah. So, and you want a shorthand for that, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like uh, Himanshu is uh, doing a shorthand for the uh, word vector. Um, um, okay, I think this is kind of a different use case here, but I think I do, I do see what you're saying. Because um, what he's doing is within the operation, he's, the operation itself is going to you know, do each word in the sentence, it's going to look it up and, and have some file that has, you know, a vector of numbers associated with that word. And then it's going to output a new, um, it's going to output a new, um, basically the, the feature will change into this, I'm assuming an array of arrays now, right? Or is this going to be each, each word becomes its own array that's a feature? Or is it the whole sentence as a feature becomes yes, an array of arrays? Yeah, so so like let's say we have a sentence of five words, and so and uh, each vector is three hundred dimensional. So the result will be five cross three hundred metrics. All right, can you say that again? Sorry. There will be five. Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, let's say we have uh, five words. Yeah. A sentence with five words, and the, each vector is three hundred dimensional. That is, there are three hundred numbers in each vector. Uh -huh. And our result will be having five rows and three hundred columns. So it will be a matrix of five cross three hundred. Okay, so okay, so so the input. What is the input to the model here? Is it each? Yeah, it will, it will be this matrix, this whole matrix. The whole thing. Yeah. Like yeah, if so basically we. Yes. I so yeah, so if if you're looking at if you're if you're saying like what is if you just took this feature data in a JSON file right and fed it to the TensorFlow model as you know each feature. What is is the feature that you're? Are you only feeding in one feature, and that feature is that array of arrays, or is the or is each feature the word? Uh, each feature is the word. Yeah. Okay. So, what happens when you have like variable numbers of features here? Yeah. So uh, we padded. it. We oh, you padded pad it. Zeros. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we make it a uniform length. So you take the longest sentence after you clean the sentences. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me write this down. Yeah. All right, so take the longest. Or we can fix the length. Uh, that this is the maximum we want, and everything will be padded. And pad. Okay, now I think I see how this is related. Okay, and pad 
so that each um, uh, okay. Right, let me just write some notes here. So um, we convert convert. Um, so we clean, then we map, then we uh, pad, so that um, each um, sort of each. Uh, so that if a feature is not present, okay, so and we pad each uh, vector becomes an in a feature. So each vector becomes a capital uh, uh, feature, uh, uh, right? Yeah, we, yeah, to simplify this, we can say like. If you have a sentence, you can have a five word sentence, ten word sentence. So we will take a word, uh, we can say unknown. And if if the, sen the longest sentence is ten words, then all the small sentence will just write unknown, 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 that, uh, all the places. Okay. At the, at, and okay. that unknown will be replaced by zero, 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 or yeah. whatever you want. So all the sentences will now be of ten. Yeah. Okay, so so that that also is interesting here because we have to know you know the max sentence size, um, and with all this asynchronous iteration here, um, yeah. you know we don't we don't really know it, so we're gonna have to do two passes, right? Um, uh, uh, that is uh, that is oftentimes fixed by user, so uh, we can take that from user also. Okay. Like most of the time, when the sentences are too big, user will uh, just say, "Okay, two fifty five words is the max I want." Okay. So then everything will be to two fifty five words. Oh, okay. So we, you, the user might provide what their max word side is, and then we drop yeah. any records that don't that don't fit within that. Uh, yeah, we'll just uh, so if sentence is let's say three hundred words, and user said two fifty five, we'll just use two fifty five remaining. Okay. Words we'll drop. Okay. Yeah. We'll truncate basically the sentence, or pad, uh, depending on the scenario. Uh, we truncate or pad each sentence based on this number. Okay. And now I'm realizing it will be better if you treat the whole matrix as a single feature. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. Because, <laughs> yeah, this looks like something that's a model config option, right? Um, to me, it yeah. sounds like, right? So, yeah, so let's 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 do that. Um, okay, so, because or else, yeah, we're going to have to create a bunch of features and then the model is basically just going to see I don't support more than this many features, right? And the user is going to have to, yeah. yeah, okay, so let's do that. Uh, and I think that'll simplify a lot of your, your data flow here as... as Basically, as Akshan was saying, because um, that becomes interesting. Um, okay, so um, we'll make the max number a uh, model config option. Um, the uh, model will take the array of arrays. Okay. Aka the feature or the sentence transformed um, into an array of each word vector as each entry in the array. Um, okay. Okay. So. So the data flow is to have operation one clean the sentence, operation two does the encoding, and then we feed it to the model for training and prediction. Okay, so then this does end up as a pretty direct mapping to what was done with MIS, MNIST, um, because you're going to basically modify the feature in place there, or not modify the feature in place, you know, but you're going to, uh, you your second operation is just going to do a for loop over that over that sentence, right? And 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 it won't worry about what the max length is. The model will worry about the max length there. 
um, actually we could have another, we could just have another operation because the models yeah. themselves probably don't want to do this. So you probably want another operation to basically truncate or, you know, or maybe you just combine this into operation two here. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. I will see that. Uh, it will be good if we combine this in embedding only. Yeah, in the second okay, one. so um, let's see. A config option to operation two. Uh, well, because it already has the, because this operation will have, I'm assuming the mapping contains the vector for the unknown, right? So this is probably the logical place yeah. to put it. Um, yeah. Output. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So, do you have a clear path forward on this? Do you think, or is there anything else you wanted to talk about here? No, I think uh, it's good. It's good to begin now. All right. Great. I can begin, and then we can talk. Cool. Um, and then, so for Shaksham, let me just put that, um, let's see. All right, cool. That's exciting stuff. Um, so for Shaksham, let's put that we wanted to, uh, we need a, oh, oh, you know, I think, I think that you might actually have a, a solution. I might, I might have a solution for you, Shaksham. Um, but we'll, I'll be damned if it's documented, right? Unfortunately. Um, let's see. I think remap is what you want, actually. Yeah, here you go. Um, yeah, uh, I think you have explained that a long yeah. time ago. Okay, yeah, but this isn't something that's well documented here, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, where is it, actually? Okay, here it is. Um, yeah, this is just like a it basically wraps, it takes your, this is, uh, let's see, what does it do? Oh yeah, it takes a data flow and then basically it looks at the output of the data flow and the data flow is basically just going to be um, your um, output operation probably. Um, and then it just looks at the output of that and then it remaps whatever you wanted. Um, so this is not, let's see. Um, this would be sort of your reference for that. Um, and you can play with this data flow if you wanted. Um, I'll tr we need to write, I think let's, let's, let's make an issue for writing some documentation for this guy. No, come on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, also, we don't have... Uh... I didn't find any documentation for config loaders and all. That uh, config loaders. Can document that too. Yeah. Okay. So let's yeah. see. Um, docs operation remap needs example usage. Okay. Um, okay. So what were you saying? Config loaders, and in what context? Like just how to use them from code or. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how do we how do we yeah, use okay, them? Because, okay. uh, it's a yeah, bit of a mess right students. now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the config loader stuff is not pretty right now. Uh, let's see, let's see. There's like multiple ways that we've been doing it. Um, let's see. Uh, Document. Add example usage to, uh, and maybe make a more. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just do this. Okay. All right. Let's see. So. We need uh, 
Big loaders. Um, big map operation. All right, okay. Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, so remap. Remap operation might be helpful for MNIST example. Although, the thing is, the but MNIST... It's not for MNIST example. Okay, just remap operation might be helpful for what? Uh, for uh, renaming the features because they are re uh, named as dot outputs dot result. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm training the model uh, in model features, I need to give the whole name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. All right, so let's jump back to uh, that code. Um, let's see. Okay, Sudhanshu, let me also capture what... Uh, so we got your auto SK learn stuff. The classifier merged. Nice job on that. Um, is there... And I see you have a pull request up for the regressor, so... Uh, Is there anything yes, you wanted the, to talk uh, about today? The regressor part is done, actually. It is? Nice. Awesome. Yes. Uh, and so, like, I was thinking, like, what should be the next target? Like, I was thinking about played ML, but there is also that uh, DAL for Pi. Yeah, okay. So, I got a message yeah. from Hashim. I haven't read it yet. Um, let me see. Um... I think because he had done some Delphi Pi stuff, but I don't know what his bandwidth is like. So um, let's see. Um, okay, so John will review offline. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, let me bring that up here. Okay. Okay. So regressor and what else was I saying? Okay. Oh yeah, what to do next. Okay. Um let's see. Um Let's actually just check this milestone here. So basically, I am going to be getting the compliance test done today because today is the last day that I can use the um, the um, static analysis tool that I have automation around. So <laughs> we are um, releasing next week. Um, so let's see about what we need to get done here. Um, predict method should take sources. Aha, that is a very good one. Um, this would be a very good one to do. Um, so like if I know, I know you want to do model stuff. So if you want to do model stuff, great. Um, if you have just interest in, if, if, if you could possibly do this one, this would be great. Um, so, cause you know, obviously if we, we need to release, so, um, we need things to be sort of cleaned up. Right. Um, no, so yes, I will work on this one next. Okay, cool. Great. Thanks. And this should be basically, I mean, this is kind of, it's going to be a little bit tedious, but it's basically just, um, go through and, and make sure that we're using sources which with features in each of these model, um, in each of the models, right? And and so the trick is basically making sure that we, we don't have copy-paste errors on, on our sources which features call and predict. Um, because, actually, no, yeah, it should pretty much always just be self.features or self.features.config.names um, because basically, I don't know, I think I might not have said this, but what I realized was that um, we just like pass records to predict and there's no guarantee that any of those records have um, have the features that we that we're asking the model to, to train on um, and uh, well that that can obviously make it blow up in weird and interesting ways rather than just having the sources which features which now has that validation on it to explode and say hey you didn't have any of those features um, so 
let's see, let me, and this, but this one's probably going to be quick for you. So let me like, uh, let me give you, let me give you some, some other stuff here. So, uh, looking, uh, for what to do next. Wow. Okay. Well, I can't believe I was, I haven't looked at that 3.8, um, release milestone, um, in a while. We're actually getting pretty close there. Um, Oh, I thought it was the weekend. No, today's not the weekend. God, I have a bunch of shit to do this week. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay, I need a bullet point for you. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so looking for what to do next. Um, so... Make sure this goes the right place. Yep, it does. Oops, oops, oops. All right, hey, nice job, Google. Um, okay, so looking for what to do next. That would be a good one. And then, um, let's see. Source DF. Um, yeah, we need to do that. Let's see. Integration, I think... I'll probably tackle the, the rest of the integration. I think we talked about because Augen, you have stuff to do. Um, so, and then channel config. Um, okay. Ooh, and then let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, I have one more thing. I'll tell you guys more about stuff later. Okay. Um, so let's see. Enable Windows and CDI HTTP test needs updating. Uh, let's check out. Um, oh, you know what might be good here is well, this is XG boot. This has weird dependencies and it's not critical. Um, yeah, PlatML would be good. I think PlatML would be good. Um, I think as a next target, you know. So let's see. Let's look and make sure that it actually looks as good as I remember yes, it looking. Yes, in the played ML thing, like I'm not able to figure out like what should be wrapped in this. Yeah, what what should we do? Yeah, okay. So yeah. let's see. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Let's see. Yeah, let me just check. So, uh, okay. So basically, it looks like maybe this is another thing similar to how. Um, uh, the Dalphapi guys do this um, patching of Scikit. Um, so maybe it's not really as interesting. Um, let's see. Ooh, how did it network? So actually, like the parade ML thing actually works best for like everything. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a tensor compiler. Okay. Um, yes. so yeah, so it just recompiles the models to be faster, right? Yes. Look or like the... any system or any architecture or machine. Okay. Nice. Um, um, let's see, I guess the other thing is, let's see. Compile. Okay, so yeah, I don't really see an obvious way to wrap this. Um, it sounds like okay, so maybe looking at this, if this is like, so it looks like they've got this thing where they're they're running on top of Keras here, right? Um, so the right approach for yeah. this might be to do Keras first, like something that that runs on top of Keras, and then basically say if you have PlatML installed, you know, optimize via PlatML. Um, let's see. Does that make sense, what I was saying there? So basically, because this, the extent of this code, 
right here is basically just using Keras, and then they say, you know, platyml Keras backend, right? And then I don't think we see any more specifics other than compile might be. I'm not sure whether that's a Keras thing or a uh, platyml thing, but I'm kind of just assuming that might be a platyml. Yeah, it's... No, it's a Keras thing. It is a Keras thing? Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So I guess, I think, yeah, actually the way to do this one is really to wrap Keras and then and then basically have a little statement at the top here um let's see uh wow we're we're fast approaching a thousand commits here um so Oh God, where CI was failing for so many, so many, so long. Oh, that was so sad. Okay. I screwed that up. I apologize. Um, let's see. Okay, so similar to this. Um, so, and let me go, where did that issue go? Issues. Um, Platymo. Come on. All right, so the approach here should probably be to um, wrap Keras first. Um, which probably is going to go under model TensorFlow because isn't Keras a part of TensorFlow now? Uh, it is like, but it's like a more like a built on top of TensorFlow. Okay. Okay. So I just Keras is like more built on top of TensorFlow. Let's see. I just I can't remember. I I know. I think I know. It is mostly built on top of TensorFlow. It provides some abstraction yeah, and like other things. I believe. Is, like we can also use it with like backend. Theano can also be used. Okay. Yeah. And backend uh, TensorFlow can also be used. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. But right now. Okay. So it's from TensorFlow import Keras because they merged it into TensorFlow basically. Um. So in this case we should put this under the TensorFlow models. Um, so I would just start it with something that's like, um, you know, I would make this, um, I don't, I mean, I don't know what the hell this, let's see. Uh, oh, this is that data set. Okay, I see. Okay, and then VGG19, I assume, is some kind of implementation of that model for that data set. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess you could just do a straight wrapping of, of, this model here, um, basically just like this. Um, and then of course you'd need to figure out, we need to figure out um, what the format, well, I guess you don't really need to care about the format of the data set just for the test cases and stuff. Um, but once we get farther along, we're gonna need to figure out how to, how to, um, you know, I think that'll probably work well with some of the stuff Saksham is doing and say, um, you know, how do we add different things here, right? Rather than just the cats. Um, so yeah, VGG is a, I think a convolutional neural network. Yeah. And it's for image classification, I assume. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and it looks like, I don't know, from, from the, uh, from, from what I'm getting from this, we have cats and not cats. Um, so we'll probably have to do something where we're probably going to want to use your directory source, um, and stuff, um, when we do a, a full, like example usage, you know, um, in the documentation with the sh files and stuff. Um, but for now, just wrap it, you know, write the test case, um, and then add the. Uh, so let's see. Let me let me write this all down because we're getting we're getting all over the place now. So uh, approach here. I'm not sure. Uh, should I? Yeah. Sorry, go uh, for it. Sudanshu, is it like? Yeah, is it like uh, we have a bunch of architectures and uh, PlayDemol is just optimizing that because I think this is what it's doing. I'm not sure. 
like we have vgg and at the bottom they have tested architectures if you go about yes that. that is i believe what it's doing so yes yes so actually it's like uh optimizing the things underneath yeah um, i think then uh, adding keras may not may not be right thing i guess because uh, they are optimizing particular architectures these are predefined architectures uh, vgg and all are predefined uh, so at the bottom i think there is oh yeah so only these ones actually yeah work i think this is what it is okay i see so we support all keras application networks from current versions of 2.0 validated networks tested for performance and connect correctness as a part of our continuous integration system okay so there's just no there's no these are the implementations that they have tested but there's no um there's no guarantees yeah, on the other ones but the, technically they should work is yeah. what they're saying okay yeah if you have some custom keras model then it may not be the okay. right, right thing so and and these i mean so these are good for these data sets but obviously we could provide our own data sets um so i mean are you saying or what are you saying himanshu do you think there's value in in wrapping this this vgg19 and then or do you think what are you what are you saying here yeah these are pretty standard so it will be nice to have them because this okay. is something uh, very popular in the community but right. actually these are used in transfer learning so we'll need the keras api wrapped properly to use them okay okay so well so when... these are pre trained model like you opened the uh, issue oh they are pre trained models year. like they are yes, pre the architecture the architecture okay. is already made so okay pass the data through and the weights you just provide i i don't see where the weights are being provided here and oh you're right there's uh, no training here it's yeah i there's no training of this model yeah okay so this actually, is actually what happens is you just load the pre trained model and provided the weights you already have saved them like you already have them uh, ah. for pre trained model and then you just remove the last couple of layers from the, those pre trained models and put on some other layers from keras and they are just ready to use for other applications ah uh, okay 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 so oh, the, thing, the thing that we are doing in our, our tensorflow uh, the thing that i added yeah yeah that sounds familiar yeah so that cuz that's what you did for the tensorflow nlp model right yeah yeah okay so but i think uh, they are doing it by themselves when they are loading the model they are loading the weights too and they just are compiling and then using it so we okay. don't need uh, addition of custom layers on top of it okay uh so they are doing it inside only uh, th uh, this is what i'm guessing this is what so you're you're saying that so uh, okay so th when we're instantiating this vgg19 what we're saying is that it's loading in the model with its layers and then it's loading in the weights and then yeah. com and then compile is doing some sort of like what is compile doing here i'm not familiar with keras yeah, it so it it is actually not loading the weights it's just loading the architecture okay. with random weights and then okay. just compiling it with certain uh certain optimizer and stuff and then i guess there should be a model dot fit somewhere yeah it, it looks like yeah there's no model dot fit anywhere there's no there's no training of this model right which is i think what was leading us to believe that that it must be loading the or wait x train model predict x train what the fuck this should be model dot predict and x model dot predict was given in the next lines if you check out the loop in the end yeah so i in range tends that's y is equals to model dot predict x is equals to yeah so but they're just doing i mean they're doing predict and predict right so um, that's my question is, is there any other example uh, this, this this may be a typo i don't know what is on the front page yeah that's i mean that's that's the thing is like is it a typo or is it not a typo right because i think because that does yeah what does it make any fucking sense <laughs> um let's see um cuz well then the thing is that they pass the x train they don't use the test data anywhere 
Yeah, what are they doing? Yeah, this should be, you know, fit, and this should be predict on test, right? Is that what we're all saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they're else like, what? Like, running initial batch, compiling title, or maybe when it does that. Okay, yeah, this is not really straightforward on what the hell oh, they're doing. Just a second. Uh, actually, where is play demo coming in here? Like, this is all Keras, right? Yeah, this is so. I think. Well, that's the thing. Is the the only so place are just, are they they like, like, or something? Uh, in that code segment, it was just explained that what what Keras does and how. Oh, this is play demo. Okay. Yeah, that's the only place it comes in is when you set the back end. It's. It. I guess this library is just for optimizing the hardware. And yeah. Working well with the data. That's yeah. It. Yeah. So. I think maybe if we don't really understand exactly, like, if this is, let's see. I mean, this is great that they can do this faster, right? But if we don't really understand exactly how to use it, then maybe we should target something else, right? Um, let's see, because we really want... So, so basically, PlayDML is not a model, based, like, it, it yeah, is it's just a Yeah, it's a compiler, compiler. yeah, exactly. Um, and so... The question here is like, uh, the question here. So, uh, you're using hardware target. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the question here is, like, can we get these, like, do we know how to get these trained models to do what you did, Himanshu, and drop the non, you know, irrelevant layers and stuff, and then use them for other things, right? Because there's really no use to us in wrapping something that, that just, you know, does some sort of predefined data set, right? Um, we want people to be training their own data sets. Um, is, is anybody familiar with Keras enough to know whether that's, you know, going to be straightforward or not? Uh, it isn't going to be straightforward. Like, it isn't, okay, wrapping, yeah. Okay. So for wrapping Keras, I think we should plan it well ahead, like how would a user go about it? Because Keras is something that everyone will use ultimately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Even TensorFlow had to get Keras to get people to use TensorFlow properly. properly. Yeah, right. So, um, okay, so we need to plan out how to wrap Keras. Keras. And the thing with Keras is it's already very simple, so yeah. Uh, while wrapping, we should not make it much complex. Yeah, we're. I mean, basically, what we're gonna do when we, yeah, we we want to make it so that, I mean, the the main the main goal when we wrap that is gonna be make it easy to use from the command line, right? Um, because that's sort of one of our main interfaces here is using things from the command line and then secondary to that would be things like the HTTP API and stuff it's going to have the same interface on top of right so um, so yeah whenever we do that we want to think about like how does it make sense from the command line uh, how to wrap Keras carefully um, so this should be a separate discussion all right um so, all right, so I think we've decided that this is something that we need to table for now. Um, so, let's see. Uh, see. Okay. So, let's close this for now. So, closing for now. Um, okay, and then let's look at others. So I found a new one the other day that looked interesting. Uh, let's see. Um, GenSim, XGBoost. XGBoost might actually be just a good one to, to go do. Um, oh, and then there was that, somebody talked about this fast AI. Let's see, what else do we got here? Um, um, let's see. 
Ooh, YOLO. I'd love to see YOLO in there. I think there's some Python implementations. Um, uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna take this offline because you've got. We've spent a bunch of time on this. So basically. Um, if you want to do XG boost, there's some code that's up there for now. Like if you're just like, you know, you run out of stuff to do and you're, you're looking for more, more, more models, like then XG boost could be good. Um, so let's see. And then, um, so, and then there was also this gen sim, which have you guys seen this? Himancho, you might've seen this cause this was like a, um, yeah. NLP stuff, it looks like. <coughs> oh, sorry. All right. Um, yeah, this could be interesting. Um, but XG Boost is sort of almost done, so you can probably get that pretty quick. And then as far as everything else goes, um, I mean, we've got a few high-priority things here that need to be... Um, let's see. Um... Okay, yeah, we definitely need to get this accuracy stuff. So if you wanted to do the accuracy stuff, that would be, I mean, that would be awesome. Uh, but that's going to be a big project, right? Um, yes, I will get into accuracy. Yeah, would you, you would like to do that? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, that would be, I mean, this would be, that's that's some major thing that we, we need. Um, so, and that sort of gives you a lot of, uh, have some, let's see. Okay, so priority-wise, then, come on, give me the priority-wise, then it would go like this, I would say, um, and it's not going to update that, whatever. Um, so, all right, so and then, guys, so we're we've gone. Uh, is is that um, pretty much it for you, Sudhanshu? Is there anything else you wanted to talk about today? Yeah, yeah, that would be handful. That would be good. All right, great. Thanks. Um, okay, so then in the spirit of uh, we always keep going over, um, do you guys want to take a break now or do you want to just keep on going? Uh, I think let's keep on going. Thanks. All right. Okay, so let's do... Um, We'll pull down, let's see, um, how do we use the same operation, two different features within a data flow? Um, well, we were already starting Augens thing, so let's finish Augens thing. I don't know which one of these is going to take longer. Um, it's, uh, tutorial, chatbot. All right. Oh, and I need to commit my damn changes. All right. Uh, Okay. All right. Uh, and so, what tests are we running? Uh, it's uh, it's not a test. You have to do it. Anyway. Okay. It's an example chatbot. Uh, can you? Let's see. What happened here? Yeah, there's, yeah, there are like I pushed every, the whole folder. Like, okay. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Okay. So, all right. So we've got the token. Okay, great. Um, you're going to, let's see. Um, so, <coughs> sorry. Okay. 
All right, all right, all right. Okay, so we've got some basically. Give me more details. Uh, so, like, uh, once you have the code, currently you have to like ma go to a link and like paste the code. Then it uh, sends because uh, you have to the user have to authorize it, right? Uh, sorry, say what? Uh, so the user has to authorize like the auth gateway. The user has to authorize. So that part you have to do manually. Then you like that code is the input for the data flow. Uh, then it gets the access token from that code. Okay. And uh, like when it wait for messages in that channel by a specific user, then okay. like whenever that user starts, uh, yeah, it's just uh, the other one is just handling it. So okay. if it's train on, it'll ask for uh, the details and uh, like I'll put a chat room. That's what I was using for. Okay. If you see that, you'll get an idea. Yeah. I see. So, okay. Get so, all right. Um, okay, I see, I see. Okay, so we have an OAuth flow here. Um, yeah. And then... So, like, after that, you just say trade model. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to span the group, so... I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so... Okay, and what is but the what I was mean, your? If you have to use, yeah. Uh, so, uh, can you like open the file? Which Client. file? Dot py. Examples tutorial. Data flow. Okay, so. Adbot client dot py. Client dot py. All right. So, um, yeah, and interpret message. So these functions, the other two functions are working. I wait for them. Okay. So message access token. Okay. And so basically, this is gonna. This is like I got a message. Now I'm uh, gonna do something and respond, right? Yeah. Uh, like you extract all the data, and finally you have. A, a, that dictionary of the message okay then you predict and like all everything is working but uh, the output I can't okay it's, so it's, not to STDL, it's just showing up on the terminal okay so I would say so CLI dot CLI okay so okay so first of all I would say it's probably good to use the Python function here um, uh, like the train function, you know, um, but I guess mm -hmm. is the user providing more of command line style stuff? Is that why you're doing it this way? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So just I see. Okay. So like for the train function, you would need to know the model, right? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you can do model dot load. Um, let's see. But yeah, let's leave it like this for now. So. Um, so uh, there's CLI. Okay. Do command run. Okay. And so you're saying that it's printing to the screen. Now, is it because you're printing the debug output to the screen? Or is it no, not? I'm not sure. Even without debug, it's not outputting anything. Okay. So even without debug, it's not outputting anything. Okay. So temp file dot name let's um, let's see and these are let's see where are these getting used so stream chat and this is going to be our async iterator operation and then interpret message access token okay um, Okay, I see, and then access token. Okay, so if I run this, does it work? Like, oops, shit, I have auto format on. I don't know, like, if I yeah, can we'll, try running it. Oh, we'll wait. see, right? Yeah, I just. Yeah. Of it might say that you are not authorized. Yeah, it might also need trust and buy. Oh, wait, wait. No, uh, just uh, do that. I have to type paste in a message because it's waiting for the message from Git. Just run it, I'll just copy paste the message. Okay. Um, 
Well, okay, so the thing, what I meant is that I have to do trust and buy because I'm behind a proxy. Um, because this is AI or HTTP is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know why they did this. Um, it's like, why don't you trust your environment? Like, if you can't trust your environment, what can you trust then? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, yeah uh, maybe you can copy paste it. Oh, no, it has to be it's my use anymore. You have to change the config. Okay. Yeah. All right, there we go. So we got something. Um, so, predictive value for salary. Okay. So, yeah, we're getting a debug output here. Interpretation message blank. Okay, so then examples data flow chatbot client. Okay, so how's my battery? Okay. Um, let's see. So message return message scdo dot get value. Okay. Redirect STD out and STD out. Okay, well, oh, oh, yes. Okay, so this is what I was going to say. So the thing is that it's not going to be in standard out because check this. So when you do CLI, you're actually going to get the results. Um, it's it's going to just be, um, you're just going to get, um, you're just going to get a, a, an array of records. Um, so you probably want like um no Priscilla I cannot I am um you're just gonna get an array of records here so if you did if you did um oh, let's see no I'm not there um let's see so um let's see so this so this is let's see where is CLI called CLI call is in main so yeah so what happens is we call CLI from the main method which is basically the thing that gets called like as the entry point um, for the console scripts entry point which is what you know Python can turn uh, any function into something that gets called from the console as a like a binary right um, so it basically grabs the result and then says like this is what we talked about last week with Saksham um, having the pretty printing still outputting this stuff so if the result is command output override um, then it's not going to dump or if it's none or display help um, otherwise it's going to jump dump the JSON um, as uh, it's going to dump the J JSON to standard out right so what you want is you want to call this underscore main if you want the JSON output. Um, so because CLI is going to actually just return you the value. Um, so if you do this, uh, let's just see what main takes here. Main takes args. Okay. Yeah, so this should do the trick here. Um, so you want to go hit it again. All right, there you go. Is it in the chat? All right. Well, okay, you're not sending it back yet, right? But I think that worked. Um, Agen? Yeah, sorry. My mic All right, on. okay. Yeah, so, so I think we're good then, right? right? All right. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, and then it formatted the whole damn thing. So just basically switch switch main or CLI from underscore main. Um, okay. So let's see. Yeah, because, or unless you want to, you know, like if you, if you want the results, like as records, then you can keep it. But, um, you know, if you don't, then um, oh, no. switch. Yeah, if you just want the, you probably just want the JSON output to just dump back for now, right? So yes, switch, yeah. um, s uh, s uh, CLI dot CLI to CLI dot main, since CLI returns results um, dot main uh, JSON encodes them. 
Okay. Um, anything else there? No, no, that's it. All right, cool. Um, yeah, also, uh, like I said, currently uh, this thing takes the code as the input. So how, what do you want to do about that? Uh, should we just keep it like that? It takes what? The access token as the input? It, uh, the access code. Yeah, so let's make so that the, a uh, config, uh, right? The, uh, no, you can't. Uh, we can't make that a config. Make that a config because it's, it changes every time. It changes every time. Okay, so let me just understand. Yeah, that. so that's the first step of oath. So, uh, uh, you if you open, can you open node store MD? Oh yeah. Okay, uh, so, so at the top. Yeah. Yeah. All indicate the first step. Okay, yeah, and so then that's where you're using your little. Link. Okay, yeah, and then this link will basically is that where you're using that HTML page that you added? Uh, or... uh, no, uh, that I have to delete that. That's just junk. Okay. I don't know. Um, so I was it's... just seeing what it was returning. <laughs> okay, so, so if you go to this link in the browser. You have to accept. Uh, you have to authorize this application. Yeah, but you have an ngrok URL here, so where is that redirecting to some local server, right? Or yeah, it's, it's my yeah, it's local server. So okay. what I was planning is like in the first part of the tutorial, uh, tell them to set this up, then uh -huh. uh, like copy paste this URL and authorize, because I can't figure out how you can automate that. Okay, yeah, no, you can't automate that. Um, I mean, they're yeah. going to need to get their access token, right? But do they only have to yes, do that yes, the yes. first time, or does it change every single time I rerun no, no, the client? No, 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 no. You just have to do that one time. Okay, so in that case, it should probably so, uh, be a yeah. config then, right? Because the way that I see this, um, you create the data flow, and this is like a secret that we're deploying with, uh, right? Yeah, uh, but uh, no. Actually, uh, the access token and the access code changes every time. Now, since I haven't used that code again, uh, it's just as you know, on standby. Okay. So I think it's better if that's dynamic because I hmm. that's part of the overflow. Okay. I don't know if so... there's a security feature if you keep that static. So once you use that code one time, you can't use it again. Okay. So. I mean, we could keep it static. I don't know if there's any security issues. So, but here you use. So, I guess I'm. I don't understand when this code expires. Uh, if uh, so, uh, can you open the operations? Yeah. So that's client dot operations. Oh yeah. Client is j just made us fine. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so the. Uh -huh. Yeah, or get token. Once you run or get token, it, it the code expires. Okay, so auth get token. Okay, so login OAuth token. Okay. So then you get the access token. And so access code. Access code is the thing that you got when you did the manual login flow, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. And then access token yes, the has to be regenerated stream. every single time you make a call to the API. Yeah, access token is regenerated uh, with your client secret and client ID. Okay. So once you register, you have to register your chatbot in uh, Gitter uh -huh. and as an application, and you'll get a client ID and client secret. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will use your client ID to get the access code. Then uh, you will regenerate access token as a hash of code and your secret. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay, access token. Like I don't know if there's an expiry time for access token. I'm guessing there will be. Yes. Okay. There. There. Yes. There's going to be an, an expiration time for access token. Um. So, let's see. Um, how about so then you use that access token in like all your communications. Mm -hmm. You use the same one. The access token. Yeah. Okay. So, but as long as I mean, as long as that token hasn't expired, though, you would be you would use the same token, right? So for this flow, for this data yes. flow, 
you know, we hit that first one where we get the token, and then we end up using the same token the whole time, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so. Or do you want to put that in the config also? Because any, anyways, they'll have to. I yeah, yeah, I see. So let's see what would be the best way to do this. So we have something that basically but has. But if you keep sending messages at some periodic time. Yeah, it's gonna expire. <laughs> Yeah, so, let's see here. Um, we almost need some kind of background um, thing, right, to, to come and, and tick on this thing and, and give us a new token, right? Um, yeah. So, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, so... But if you are like a checking, like maybe send some uh, some other request using this token, some valid request, it it's it will be keeping them valid. Like it won't expire. It won't expire so long as you're keeping it valid. Okay, yeah. as long as you use it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. Um. So if you like listen to messages at every period of time. Yeah. At some point of time. Anyways, uh, we are using it because our it's. Is stream API, so we are always listening to that. Okay, so you're always got a connection, therefore it shouldn't expire. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, That's my guess. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not entirely sure about about that. Um, sometimes, usually they they will expire, um, even if you use them. Like if you're still if you make another post request, right? Um, your your initial it, it validates it on the initial connection. I'm assuming not on the um, not on the um, not on just the the stream and kicks you out after that long, right? Um, I okay. I don't know. I mean, this is all an assumption, right? So we don't we don't know. Um, but I would I would venture to guess that your post request that's initiated to post another message um, is going to hit validation of the token. Also, uh, in the in their tutorial, uh, in the examples which they are showing, mm -hmm. uh, the token is fixed. Okay, the token so is fixed. Yeah. The token never expires. Yeah. They they don't ask us to generate a token. They just again, like they provide a sample token and a sample token. Uh, let's just let's let's code. look some stuff up, and that way we're all we all know. Okay. Um, so. Developers register their application. Site client sheet should not be shared. Uh, so this is your token, right? The flow is based on redirects. Okay. Um, request users to request getter access. And was this the thing where you got the initial? Well, let's see. Yeah. So exchange the code for the access token After with the token. Step, you hit the code. Yeah. Testing. Oh. Okay, so. Okay. All right, I'm just thinking because it says. It says use this flow if your client is another web application, um, which is not what we are, right? So let's see. Um, So yeah, because that's that's my only concern here is use this flow if your client is a web another web application and we're not another web application, right? Mm -hmm. So um, get a redirects back to your site. Yes. Um, um, but I oh, sorry. Not anything. So access token. But anyways, you'll have to authorize yourself because you're also posting, right? Sorry, say again. Uh, you're also posting back messages, right? So at some point you have to authorize. Yeah, I'm just thinking, let's see. I guess they don't really have docs on other things. So, yeah, because I was just thinking, you know, if this is, because, yeah, the, the OAuth flow as this is, is, uh, is, 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 this is like they're saying it's targeted at, um, 
at at you know another web app, right? So I was trying to find out yeah, if there's somewhere in here it. that it says you know something more like a like a personal access token like GitHub has, um, but it looks like no. Um, so once you sign in, yeah, so like once you sign in, uh, if you sign in here, you get your own token. Yeah. Uh, is is that what you're talking about? I'm talking about. Um, um, let's see. I'm trying to understand. Create instance your token. I'm trying to understand um, whether it's necessary to do that full um, OAuth flow, right? Um, okay, oh, this thing it hasn't okay, been touched. Uh, in like, a while. what's this? I I didn't see this. This is it's this is a Gitter client, right? So this is one of the libraries they listed. Um, let's see. So they have third-party API wrappers. Um, so and this is what I'm trying to understand is. Uh, let's see. You can create Gitter bus to interact with the user tool. What is this? I'm trying to understand whether that is. Yeah, okay, personal access token. Because I'm trying to understand whether we need to do that OAuth flow, because OAuth is usually, you know, when we do OAuth, it's because we're trying to have our service, our service has been delegated permissions of a user to post on behalf of that user, right? Um, okay. And let me, I gotta grab my charger. Um, and in this case, we're not really posting like we're not really po we don't really want to post on behalf of our user we really want to post on behalf of the bot right um okay. so i'm not sure if we really want that oauth flow so much as we want you know some sort of other authentication flow here like the personal access token um so let's see i think we might be able to use that um let me see so I'm trying to plug in my laptop here. Um, okay. So once you have created your GitHub account, log on to the Gitter developer page and access this page and take notes on the account's personal access token. Yeah, okay, but maybe they have screwed this up too, right? So. Oh, you, I, you have to sign in. Oh, I have to sign in, okay. Okay, so that's, this that's the whole yeah, so this must be the token we're looking for here. Um, okay. Um, so. Oh yeah, actually this this is much simpler. Yeah, so I think this avoids the OAuth flow if we can use this personal yes, access yes, token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the question is though, like, how do we make a bot? Um, because a bot is going to be, you know, trying to post as a different user. Um, well, I think uh, you'll have to make another user. Unlike you have to make another user. You have to create a user ID. Okay. Um, like FA. First, to get an access token, you need to be a user. Okay, yeah, that's true. You have to be a user. So. Um, also, uh, like, that's GitHub is another library, right? Do you mind yeah. Well, and so, yeah, I don't know if we should use that because if you look at the maintenance on that thing, obviously it hasn't been touched for a while. You know, it's probably stable, but it's also not, um, it also is not, has, it does not have async IO support. So we could use, you know, run an executor and stuff. Um, but for what we're doing, we may I not mean, need I, that. I will, I will go see the source code and see how they are authenticating. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah, so real time messaging service, publish, subscribe. Um, server side Ruby client um, publishing messages okay 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 Live background, real time data. Okay, yeah, and here's Gitter token. Okay, now you need a token which you obtain using the OAuth API. 
I'm kind of see this is I'm trying to ascertain whether that personal access token is interchangeable with the OAuth token. I think it is. I think it is. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that personal access token is the same as the Gitter token. Um, so in that case. Yeah, um, uh, their source code also is uh, using something similar. Yeah, so let's just have um, let's have people yeah, use I their personal to access see token. If that's possible. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's write down. Let's investigate whether their personal access token is something we can use here. Um, okay. So uh, let's investigate if the personal access token is something that can be used um, instead of OAuth flow. All right. Ooh, it's cold out here. Um, all right. Okay. So are we good on that then? Yeah. Yes. All right, cool. So, Sakshan, what is going on here? What are we looking at? Uh, like, I have an operation con convert color that uses CV two dot convert color, and okay. like, if I'm if I'm using like three features and two of them need uh, one of them needs uh, uh, the color to be converted from uh, BGR to gray, and one of them needs the color to be converted from BGR to HSV space. Okay. So like so you resize we... you resize and then you want to take the resized image and you want one Yeah, the one... resized image is going into uh, going to three operations. Uh-huh. And before going to the three operations, two of them need to uh, change their color space. Okay. So need to use that one operation to do that. Okay. So yeah, because right now basically the flow is take the image and and all, all the images go. Well, so can't you just change the inputs of the ones that need the color space modified and make them come from the color space um, operation? Like uh, I'm trying to you like I have to use the same operation two times. Yeah. Oh wait, you have to use the same operation two times. For okay. two different tasks. Okay. So you need you need to uh, you can no longer use the flow dot auto is the situation here. Um, you have to oh, take. Oh, the CLI does flow dot auto. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, so then in, in that case we need support for. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, oh yeah, I was thinking about this the other day. Okay. Um, okay. So we need to support uh, operation instances on the CLI or via uh, via the CLI create command. Um, so. We need to support operation instances via the CLI create command. Um, so if we see an equals, so we need to do something where, um, let's see, we need to do something where we can, um, like, you know, sort of like how we have those uh, labeled, or like the, like, yeah, we have labeled, um, uh, models or labeled sources um, where we say, you know, blank equals CSV or something, right? So uh, we need something where it's like instance name equals operation name. Uh, operation name. Um, and that way, what we could do is um, we could have a create command like data flow or data flow, data flow create, um, uh, you know, so. I can share the command on yeah. Gitter. Great.
have shared the command. So it looks, it should look something like this, like uh, Calcihist wants uh, the color space to change from BGR to HSV. And in, and in hue moments, we need the color space to change from BGR to gray. Okay. Okay, so we need to change. Uh, okay, can you say that again? Sorry. So in Cal, uh, when we give the uh, Im uh, the resized image to Cal uh, Cal calculate histogram, here we need to first change the color space uh, of the image from uh, BGR to HSV. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so... in the case of few moments, we need that to be changed from BGR to gray. Okay. So equals. Okay, and these are the seeds. Okay, convert color. Okay, so you need two convert color operations, basically. Yes. Okay. Um, so you'd have, like, something like, you know, uh, gray. Uh, So okay. we'd have something like this, and then let's see. Um, and then this is the calcist was what? Uh, calcist takes uh, for BGR to HSV. sort of its own thing here, right? Okay. So the the Herolic one doesn't have any sort of, it just gets straight from resize, right? Yeah, yeah. Gray takes resize. Who moments takes gray after resize. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, normalized calcist. Okay. Um, this looks about right, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I want. Okay, this is, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then let's do real quick here. this back up. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Oops. Ooh, tabs and spaces and spaces and tabs. Damn it. Okay. Hopefully Gitter fixes this for us. Or it'll make it a giant mess. And it's a giant mess. All right. Okay. All right, I'm sorry, that's a giant tabby mess. Uh, let's see, but there it is. Actually, wait, we can fix this real quick. All right, is that pretty much all you needed there? 
Yeah, so, so it will work. Or do we need to? Uh, no, we got to. Yeah, we got to make it work. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. I'll maybe take a. I'll take a look and see if I can do this. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's basically just going to be um, if you see a um, an equals, then you're going to do operation instance name, and you're going to have um, so. Wait, where's a good example for this? Um, I believe we have one somewhere. Or instances. This is all stuff that it's like needs to go in the uh, the data flow tutorials. Um, okay. Um, or operations. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, it's operations. Okay. Um, so let's see. I believe. Where is it? Um, Okay. Um, yeah. So basically, you're gonna end up with um, you're gonna end up with if you see anything that's equals or let's see what is the auto. Yeah, I think right now what does the create command do? Um, CLI data flow. Okay. It goes through. It loads all the operations. Um, okay, yeah, it loads all the operations, and it just calls dataflow.auto. So, and then let's see, what does it do here? Okay, it modifies the flow. Um, and it exports it. Um, and then it adds the seed values. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to change it from um, dataflow.auto. So dataflow.auto basically goes in and it's the equivalent of doing like... Um, let's see. Yeah, if there's an equal sign, then yeah. just... Yeah, because you're going to do operations equals, you know, the basically op.name, op... Um, unless, uh, and you're probably going to want to make so for load operations, let's see, operations. Yeah, you're probably going to want to make this a, a dictionary here, right? And then uh, to do if you see an equals, uh, so uh, this should be a key value mapping of uh, instance name to operation to loaded operation. Um, uh, if e not equals use operation name as instance name, otherwise use instance name. Um, and then let's see, you're going to need to call, uh, you're going to need to call data flow dot auto flow, um, or whatever that method is. Um, because auto will do the flow. And if you specify the operation instances, I don't believe it. Or no, I think as long as flow is not specified, um, it's going to, yeah. I think as long as flow is not given. Auto flow, yeah. So if flow is not given, it's going to do auto flow for you. So you really just need to give the operation instance names if there's an equals, and then this it, you should be the same as doing dot auto. Um, although just dot auto def auto. Does it do anything else? Um, oh, it does. It goes through and it says it grabs the 
so this might be something you need to do too is look at um because i think this allows you to pass implementations and i do believe we load implementations if they exist so you might want to you might want to just add this logic to um to uh the init method um here you might want to add it to the init method around here or something um, so that if it's passed an operation implementation it adds it to the implementations but i thought it also did that somewhere else let's see implementation set default update operation name op imp let's see self dot operations update operations okay it's already going to do that for you um so self dot operation yeah it's going to it'll be fine so basically just map the equals the instance names and then the rest of that command should work so. okay okay all right anything else from anyone today Oh, no, thank you. Okay. So. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, we got to figure out how to go. Not so long on this. I'm not sure. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. Um, not haven't. I have not yet figured out how to keep us on time. Obviously. So. All right. Thanks, everyone, and have a great um, rest of your day. And I'll see you on Friday. Bye. Bye.